nerds, what's up? Today's video is going to be all about a Q&A because I hit 7,000 subscribers. What? Thank you for subscribing and following and commenting and everything. So there is going to be a giveaway at the end of this video. In order to enter to win, all you had to do was ask a question on the Q&A announcement video. So I will be doing a random generator for all the numbers of comments and somebody will win from there. So let's just get right on into this because there's a lot of questions. <laughs> What got you into booktube and what is your favorite genre to read to get you out of a book, book slump? What got me into booktube was first I was making videos on YouTube that were mostly makeup related and that was something that a friend of mine that I don't really talk to anymore, we uh, started together and then at some point I really wanted to talk about I want to say it was Divergent um, but I'm not sure if that was the book that started it. Um, so I looked up a review to, t to find somebody to talk to about it and that's how I found booktube in general and then me transitioning my channel was more realizing that like I really liked talking about books. I was doing both for a while and then my channel just eventually mostly now is all about books. I mean obviously I do still do some makeup videos and I do do some like other random topics but most of the time it's all about books and that's just me realizing that that's really what I wanted to do and also coming from somebody who has always been an avid reader and not really ever having anyone in person to talk to it was really nice to find a community that just rants about books just like me. <laughs> Favorite genre to read when I get into to get out of a book slump really depends on my mood. The easiest books are sometimes um, contemporary, but then sometimes contemporary is what puts me into a book slump. So it's basically like whatever is the opposite of what got me into a book slump is my favorite thing to read to get out of one. Um, and then if nothing else fails, then I will read Harry Potter. <laughs> What's the best book recommendation you've ever received? I would actually probably say the Throne of Glass series. I think that Brittany from Brittany's Book Find recommended I try that series out. I think is how I read that series, if I remember correctly, and that one was a really good one. What book has had the biggest impact on your life? And so I'm just gonna start like pointing back when the answer is Harry Potter because that one. <laughs> I'm just curious to hear what your people's favorite book is. Um, definitely Harry Potter. I can't pick one, but then if I wanted to pick a standalone, I would say The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. If you could rewrite one book in your favorite series, which would it be and why? I would rewrite Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix because that book makes me want to never read the rest of the series and I always end up never reading the rest of it. What is your favorite scene from your favorite book? <sighs> if I was talking about Perks of Being a Wallflower, I would say my favorite scene is when they're in the truck and they're sitting, one of them, they're like taking turns like flying, like per feeling like they're gonna fall. And I really like that scene. In the movie, my favorite scene is when they play that song that is like the theme song of the movie, Harry Potter. One of my favorite scenes, two of them, and they're both not in the movie, and they're both in the last book, and one is at the very beginning, Dudley tells Harry that he doesn't think he's a waste of space. <gasps> Dead. And the other one is when Mrs. McGonagall says that if Slughorn chooses to fight with Voldemort, then Horace, we duel to kill. So badass! How long have you had a love for reading and how did your love for reading start? I've loved reading since I can remember. My mom was an avid reader. Um, she's not so much anymore, but she used to be when I was little. And so we used to read books to uh, like chapters before bed. There has never been this like one spot where suddenly my reading started. My reading has changed throughout the years, but I've, I've never not liked to read that I can remember. If you could live in any fictional world, which world would you pick? And that's really hard because most fictional worlds have a lot of issues. <laughs> I think I would pick Red London from Darker Shade of Magic series. What's something you love doing besides reading that we might not know about? So recently I started doing yoga. Yes, I've been doing yoga for the entirety of 2018 now. I really love yoga. I love watching Netflix. I watch a lot of TV. I'm a huge binge watcher so like 
right now I'm watching the entirety of Desperate Housewives for like the third time. <laughs> because I like to rewatch shows. I do like to draw, but I rarely do it because I don't like being not great at things and I'm not great at drawing even though I like to do it. So it like gets frustrating after a while. What is your least favorite book and why? A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Fuck that book. Let it burn. I know we don't burn books. Like this is a bad, burning books is bad, but that one can go away forever. I've read it twice. I've read it once and then I cliff noted it the second time because I had it for a second class and it is the worst book. So boring. What is your dream job? So I'm going to school to become an interpreter. It's always been a thought in my head that that would be really cool and if I'm talking about like dream specific job, I would love to be an interpreter for like Broadway shows. Um, that's probably never going to happen because I'm unwilling to move out of California, but that would be a dream job. And I also used to really want to be a flight attendant. What are some of your favorite TV shows? Grey's Anatomy, Desperate Housewives. Uh, I'm an old lady. Secretly, you guys didn't know. Also really loved season one of True Detective, but not season two. Game of Thrones. We watched Westworld season one. Phenomenal. Westworld season two, we stopped watching because it wasn't good. What book do you think would make a better place if ev only everyone would read it? George by Alex Gino is a children's book about a trans, I want to say a trans girl if I remember correctly. They're in like fifth grade and if every parent and every child and every teacher and all of the things had to read this book it would make the world a better place because everyone could get some perspective on what it means to be transgender and how you assuming things can affect people. I'm in love with how your hair looks now. Do you want to keep it that length, cut it super short again, or grow it out? But right now I'm kind of growing my hair out, which is why currently it's doing this like pointy thing that I can't decide if I like. But I'm trying to grow it out into just more of like a traditional girl's pixie cut. Girls longer than it is right now, but not long or even short. I'm not doing that at the moment. Right now it's in an awkward stage that I don't like at all. So that's what's going on. I don't plan on shaving it again anytime soon at least. What is your dream wedding? My dream wedding <laughs> is trying to be what I'm planning right now for my wedding. I want to get married on or near the beach. The ocean needs to be in the photos. I don't care if I'm up on a cliff, which is probably what we're planning, or if I'm down on the sand, which is what my fiance was like, mm, no. Um, I want to get married barefoot. That's been something I've always wanted. A thing that has not been always something that I wanted but is something I want now is a flowerless wedding. So the bouquets are going to be made of paper books, um, pages, instead of having any florals because I think it's one, um, dumb to spend money on things that will die and two, I think that it's just a waste of florals. Like, don't cut them just to kill them later, so I don't like that. I have like a dress style in mind as well, um, and that's really dependent on how confident I feel in the style that I like because your girl has self-consciousness, which don't we all? What's your favorite book with LGBTQ representation? George by Alex Gino. Girl Made of Stars by Ashley Herring Blake. I just recently read it. It has some huge trigger warnings for rape and sexual abuse, but so if you're into like a sad contemporary then that's the book that you could that could be for you. But it also has bisexual representation that I thought was so well done and it has a um, non-binary character too and just Ah, what's the, the most beautiful place you've ever been? Been to the Great Wall of China, which it's a weird experience because the Great Wall of China is so hard to take in, but I wouldn't exactly call it beautiful because it smells like urine. But the like the greenery and like the fact that you're on this piece of man-made wall that's been around for so long is really really chilling. So I don't know if that really goes with beautiful, but it was an experience. Where's your favorite place to read? On my couch. 
or alternatively in my bed. What book changed your life? I answered that question. Have you ever considered writing a book? If so, what genre would it be? Yes, I have. It's contemporary, it's sad, it has a dual time frame. Um, like a past and present. It's an adult novel. If you could visit any country in the world for free, where would you go and why? I would go to whatever's the most expensive place in Europe <laughs> so that I wouldn't have to pay for it. Alternatively, Australia. I know Australia is really expensive to go to and I would go there. One, because I have friends all over Australia, so that. Who is your favorite Disney hero and villain? Hades from Hercules, the cartoon, because amazing. And alternatively, I would pick Scar. Aladdin. He is the hottest cartoon. Don't try to fight me on it. Was choosing your major career difficult or was it something you always had in mind? Choosing my career was not a fun time. It was very rough. I went to community college for three years and during those three years I changed my major four times. I almost didn't transfer to a university. I almost decided not to get a degree. I was gonna go be a flight attendant actually but then I decided against that and that it was smart to do a degree first and then if I still want to be a flight attendant to go back because um, they do it's easier to get hired if you have a degree. While I was getting my degree in anthropology I found linguistics which is my minor and if I had done it the way that I really wanted to, I would have stayed an extra year and gotten a double major in linguistics because linguistics was really my passion. I found it and I loved it and there was nothing wrong with it and it's so cool. If you guys ever have a chance to take a linguistics class, it's one of the hardest things you will ever take but one of the coolest in my opinion. I think it's so interesting to learn how, how we learn language and how language changes over time, how languages die, how languages are born. I was ready to be done and I didn't want to spend the extra money so I, I graduated with a minor in linguistics and a major in anthropology, took a year off, now I'm going back to school um, to get a certificate in sign language interpreting. The last semester of community college I took a sign language class and the teacher suggested to me that I look into becoming an interpreter because I was picking up the language really quickly and that I did have a passion for it and stuff and so that started the finding of different professors who got me closer and closer to that goal that was my school life it was not easy it was like one step forward two steps back two steps forward one step back just like constant constant change what is the best book that you originally bought just for the cover, but the novel itself ended up being amazing. Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This cover is beautiful. What book character could you most identify with and why? Hermione Granger. <laughs> Reader, nerdy, uh, not very many people like her because she's a know-it-all. And I was definitely a teacher's pet as a child. I still am, let's be real. And if you could be any animal in the world, what would you pick and why? I either want to be a dolphin or any sort of cat. Big cat, small cat, any kind of cat, doesn't matter. Um, cats because, I mean, I'm obsessed with the cats that I have and I want to be one. And dolphins because I've always really loved the idea of being a mermaid and they're like almost mermaids. <laughs> How did you and Matt meet? I moved from my hometown, which is where we live now, it's a big city near LA, up to the central coast, which is where he's from. My grandma lived up there and so did my aunt. So I moved in with my grandma because I wanted to move out of my parents' house but I wasn't ready to be on my own yet. Did a year of community college up there, started working at Applebee's, and we met at Applebee's because he also worked there. And now we're be with yeah, we're together. <laughs> it's a thing. We've been our anniversary is in a week. Five years. Which Grey's, Anat Grey's Anatomy character is your favorite, or which are you most like? Christina Yang is my favorite. I am Lexi Gray. <laughs> Just insane like I'm insane it's fine I just I know I probably am more like Lexi Gray meets April Kepner just like slap them together and you got Cassie if your life was turned into a book what would the title be a hot mess what the fuck is going on I have no idea what's going on which book do you see yourself in the most both of Lily Paradis books I saw a lot of myself in she wrote ignite and volition and just those two main female characters are me, especially Ignite. It's about a girl who's in college and has two young siblings and her parents die. Just to decide if she's going to be the guardian. What's your favorite book you've read this year? Strange the Dreamy Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. What is your favorite part of being on booktube? I just really like 
that I can rant about books and that people respond with just as much enthusiasm. It feels great to be able to like be equal with people. Favorite book about star-crossed lovers? Gemina by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. So first I want to give you a compliment and say I love your Lion King tattoo. It's beautiful. Thank you. It's my favorite tattoo. What is your favorite and least favorite book you have read this far and why? Also wanted to know if you read horror novels. I don't read horror novels because I don't like horror movies and I'm afraid to read one because that sounds like a lot of time spent being scared. My favorite book this year was Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor and my least favorite book this year was Summer of Broken Things by Margaret Peterson Haddix. It was not a fun time for me. If you could win your own contest, which $20 book would you choose? I would probably put in either an order for Vicious or Vengeful by V.E. Schwab or I would put in Muse of Nightmares pre-order or I would do um, I Still Don't Own God's Grave yet. So I, one of those, I don't know which. Can you grab your top 10 favorite books in 20 seconds and show them to the camera? No. Okay, hold on. Are you ready? I'm not. Okay. <laughs> I was not able to pick my top 10, but I was able to get some of them. A Court of Thorns and uh, Roses, which really means A Court of Mist and Fury. Tower of Dawn, which really means Throne of Glass, or any of the books other than this one. <laughs> Hunger Games, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, that's four. Lady Midnight, that's five. Strange the Dreamer is number six. The Diviners is number seven. Illumine is number eight. Harry Potter is number nine. And Perks of Being a Wallflower is right here, number ten. But that's the one I didn't grab. Thank you for making me destroy my shelves. I appreciate it. Should I just do the rest of the video from up here? Favorite Disney song. I just can't wait to be king. Also, the Moana song. <laughs> if you won the lottery and could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go? All of Europe. Like, I would backpack through Europe. Have you ever thought of closing or deleting your channel? What kept you from doing it? Yes, I have. If you guys have been with me for a while, you know that last year, towards the end of the year, I stopped filming for a while. I was, like, gone for, like, two and a half months or something, and I almost deleted the channel. But I decided not to because I started missing booktube and missing filming and missing talking about books and everything so here I am how many languages do you speak Two, although you don't technically speak sign language but I I do know sign language bibliothon video you're most proud of and why and I don't remember what year it was but it was the year I was blonde it's a video about the character from volition and I made a wedding video where she's talking to the camera right before she gets married do you have any book quotes you want to get tattooed or do you have any bookish tats I have a quote um, on my ribs right here it says we read to know we're not alone and then it has CS Lewis's um, signature because that's who said that and then I also have the Harry Potter tattoo but that's um, not a quote it's the Deathly Hallows. I really want to get um, we accept the love we think we deserve somewhere on my body but I don't know where and I don't know how yet. How do you decide what you'll read next? I make a TBR and then from there I mood read so I just pick whatever I feel like. Sometimes I have books that I need to read because of the book club or because of you know whatever happens to be around like a net galley arc or something like that but other than that it's a lot of times based on like what's really popular right now on booktube is making me want to read it scythe i read scythe because everyone was talking about scythe favorite cassandra claire's character is it too basic to say magnus bane because it's definitely magnus bane i also really like mark blackthorn though did you regret cutting your hair so short i think that was so brave no but um, it is scary. Um, I've, I've cut it like around about this short before, like years and years ago. And the first time doing that was really scary. And then this time around, I couldn't think about it too long when I started shaving my head. I just, I just did it. I knew that if I kept thinking about it, I would talk myself out of it, but I wanted to try it. And so my hair has never been something I'm attached to. So it's the easiest thing to say fuck it let's try something how did you get into reading and did you like reading when you were little which i already answered what do you think of books with very vivid descriptions of mental illness um i usually tend to like them i don't have many things that are triggering to me so i tend to really enjoy books that are really intense and um sometimes shocking like I know that a lot of people are against the idea of like a shock value situation, but um, I tend to like that stuff.
Let's say you are a movie director. What book would you bring to life? Throne of Glass. Also, what book would you turn into a musical? <laughs> oh. The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. You know those characters would be into singing a song. If you could live anywhere, real or not, but never leave, where would you want to live? The secret night court world. Do you want any more tattoos from Dog Eared Page? And if so, what? Yes, I have something drawn out for my back. It's gonna be huge. It's a tree that's roots turn into a dream catcher. And within that, it's gonna have different little things like a snitch and, um, you know, like just fun, fun stuff that's inside of it. Would you rather drink a magical potion that sends you into your favorite fictional world? Or would you rather be able to create a portal and have your favorite fictional characters come through? I hope you have a lovely day. I would rather have them come to me because then they would be safe because our world is a lot less scary than most other fictional worlds. On average, how many books do you read in a month? Anywhere between four and eight is usually, I sit somewhere in there. What was your favorite book when you were a kid? Love you. My favorite book when I was a kid was either Harry Potter <laughs> Or Junie B. Jones. I loved Junie B. Jones. What books would you recommend one of your friends to read because it's really their style? If I was trying to get my friend Kelsey to read something, I would pick The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. If I was trying to get my friend Bailey to read something, I would pick something like the Throne of Glass series or the Court of Mist and Fury series, which I actually already got her to read the Court of Mist, the Court of Thorns and Roses series, and now I need her to read the Throne of Glass ones. If I was trying to convince my sister for a book to read, I would pick something that's very fast paced, like Illuminae. If I was trying to get Sierra to read, I would pick something like Other People's Houses. What's your favorite thing about being part of the booktube community? I already answered that. What's your favorite book of all time? Favorite author, Sarah J. Mass. What book do you think is way too overhyped? Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. Overhyped author, Sarah J. Mass. Even though she's my fave. How about what book do you find is underhyped, underhyped and needs more love? Deeds of Snow by Carenza Jennings. It's a murder mystery and kind of a historical fiction. Read it! Underhyped author. I feel like the girl with the dragon tattoo gets not enough love, so that's, I'm gonna go with Stieg Larsson. Do you want another in tattoo, and if so, what would you get? I've answered it. I know you talked about subbing for an ASL class. How much ASL do you know, and do you plan on learning more or being involved with the culture? I am learning, I'm going to school to become a sign language interpreter. I currently am about to start the ASL level five class, which is the last one for the language acquisition portion of the interpreting classes and then after language acquisition goes into the actual interpreting stuff so that'll start next semester so I'm towards the end of the learning the sign language although I'm nowhere near what I would consider to be fluent because for me to consider myself to be fluent I would want to be great at the change in grammar and I still a lot of times use English grammar instead of ASL grammar so that's a problem but I'm 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 definitely conversational um, and can discuss lots of stuff, lots of different topics. What are your other hobbies of interest other than reading? I answered it. What book do you think is a must in everyone's TBR? This one! Read it! Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Favorite Hamilton song? History Has Its Eyes on You. That's my favorite song. Have you ever used Wattpad to write or read stories or fanfiction? No, but I know what it is. Favorite social media? Twitter. What's your favorite book that you've ever read in all of the biannual bibliothons you've participated in? This year, this round that just passed was my favorite stack. Um, I read When Dimble Met Rishi. I read When Katie Met Cassidy. What's your favorite Canadian author or book? I don't know which ones are Canadian. I'm sorry. Is there any one book you regularly reread? I take you again to these ones. Is that you singing in your intro and outro? <laughs> no. <laughs> I wish. No. I'll um it's a it's a song by a group called Hotel Cinema. If you could own the first edition of any book, what would it be? What is your favorite book? What is your book that made you love to read? Do you listen to music when you read? Nope. Do you create playlists for each book you read? 
Nope, I'm really interested in learning about people's heritages. Do you know what yours is? Mine is a mess. I call myself a mutt. I know I am Native American. I know I am Welsh. I know I am Irish. I know I am Spanish. I know I am German. <laughs> I know I am a lot of things. My family, though, for a many, many generations has been in the U.S., so I don't have any relatively recent immigration. I'm just a mutt of Americanness. If you could travel any part, where will it be? I answered that question. Which Harry Potter characters do you prefer die or not die? None of them should die, except for Umbridge. <laughs> Why didn't she die? What do you do for work? Ooh, that's a loaded question. I have a lot of jobs. Are you ready? I'm a substitute teacher during the traditional school year. I sub for K through 12 all over the district that I live in. So I deal with all types of students from all different backgrounds in this area. I get all the age ranges, although I prefer not to do under third grade. Uh, second grade is like an okay maybe, but I don't like kindergarten or first grade. They're too annoying. High school and middle school are really where I like to be. And during the summer, I've been working at a hearing office. So I work for social security. I'm a hearing monitor which means that I bring claimants in for the hearings um, for disability and then I make sure everything is set up correctly. I do the paperwork and I also do the recording equipment so I make sure it's all turned on and off at the correct times and I take notes during the hearings. I'm not technically a stenographer because I don't use that special keyboard so I don't have to type verbatim which means word for word what everyone's saying. I just have to type like note taking. I also work for a company online where I work from home and that is verbatim closed captioning. So so I pick up jobs and then I listen to everything and I make sure that everything's correct and the grammar's all right um, and that's how I get paid for that. What is a series or book that you read late or jumped on the bandwagon when the train had stopped at the station? Congrats. The Mortal Instruments. <laughs> I read City of Bones a long time ago and then I watched the movie and I hated the movie so much that I never continued with the books. That's how much I hated the movie. And then when I met Emma, Emma was the one to convince me to read The Mortal Instruments. If that's not her brand, I don't know what is. What do you do for work? Sorry if you said this already. I just answered that question. When are you gonna come hang out with me and my bookshelves? Also, what is your favorite book? What about your least favorite? Okay, I answered all of the questions except for we're going to hang out. September 8th, I'm ready. What's your favorite part of NaNoWriMo? Do you have any idea what you might write this November? I say every year that I wanna try to do NaNoWriMo and then I get really discouraged um, to do it because I don't like not being good at things and I'm not very good at writing, so I if, I, if I do it, I'm going to work on the same story that I talked about earlier in this video. I don't know if I'm going to do it because I don't know if I'm going to decide to do it. And yes. So now I need to find a random number generator. Let's see. How many comments did we have? There were 80 comments. So I'm going to put in a random number generator. Number 73. Allie Burris. Allie Burris 1. So I'll be contacting you, Allie, very soon on... Um, on Twitter so if you could actually tweet me that would be great and I will get you something from Book Depository up to $20 so you can go ahead and look at that too. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you so much for 7,000 subscribers. I just I don't understand. Where did you all come from? I have no idea. I don't know why you're here. Why do you watch me? I don't understand. So thank you so much for 7K. Congratulations to Allie Burris, and I will see you guys very soon with a new video. I make videos every Wednesday and Saturday, so make sure to hit that notification bell if you want to be notified every time I make a video. I'll see you guys very soon. Bye! I wish I